The conservation of rotational kinetic energy actually contains an element of linear kinetic energy, as we saw before. In the example that we showed just in the previous video, there wasn't actually an element of linear kinetic energy because the entire thing was going in a circle. But with pulleys that rotate, so we're not talking about ideal pulleys anymore, uh, they actually turn uh, linear kinetic energy into rotational kinetic energy. So there is an element of uh, linear kinetic energy from an object being attached to a movable pulley and moving down. So here, if there's a block on here, the block will have, uh, well, I have an acceleration downwards, but it will also have a linear kinetic energy of a half mv squared. But the pulley also rotates. So the pulley itself will have a rotational kinetic energy of a half i omega squared. So if you can combine these, so you get the initial potential energy of everything, uh, and then the initial kinetic and rotational kinetic energy, then we can find, say, the speed at which <clears throat> a block may hit the ground. So we've seen in chapter 4, or in section 4, I think it's section 5 now at this point, <clears throat> that pulley questions being modeled using moments of inertia, in this case, uh, actually represents the pulley more than having it as a simple fixed pulley, because pulleys aren't necessarily fixed at all times. If an old one becomes loose, for instance, it can cause... Um, an increase in acceleration, which implies an increase in both kinetic and rotational kinetic energies.